This is the rematch that you knew you needed. We have Diego Fajaya taking on Benil Dariush. And listen, we talked about it at the start of our overall prediction videos. If you go back to the intro, in our Fight of the Night screens, we had Manel Cape taking on Alessandre Pantoja with Diego Fajaya taking on Benil Dariush. Matt, in their original fight, it was Benil Dariush earning a decision win. And for Diego Fajaya, he loses that fight. Then he gets knocked out by Dustin Poirier. Then he wins six fights in a row. And it's been a long time for those six fights to happen. And the weird thing is, I went back and watched a lot of Diego Fajaya fights. And if you look at the last three, I think they're really telling for this one. He beat Rustem Kabilov. Well, what's Rustem Kabilov really good at? An awfully good wrestler. Really good wrestler. Carlos Diego Fajaya, very high-level jiu-jitsu practitioner. So what does Diego do? Well, he snaps Kabilov's six-fight win streak. There's a lot of win streaks that he snaps. He snaps a six-fight win streak, and his striking looked really good. We saw a uh, more evolved boxer out of Diego Fajaya. He doesn't really throw a ton of leg kicks, really just kind of throws the hands, pushes a pace. If he gets you against the cage, he'll take you down, and he'll wear on you. Anthony Pettis knows that. That was his last win. If you look at the fight, though, after that, so he beats Kabalov, snaps that win streak. This is the most important win I think that he has on his record. I know you're going to touch on it, so I'll, I'll tee it up for you. When he beat Maribek Taisumov at UFC 242, I'm from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. You've said I was at twice. a Buffalo Wild Wings in, I want to say it was Bangor. I'm pretty sure it was Bangor. I'm at B-Dub Dubs with my wife, and I watched Carlos Diego Fajaya beat Maribek Taisumov in a way I didn't think would be possible. So Maribek Taisumov going into that fight was in what we'll call the Ryan Hall position, if you will, where it's, okay, this guy's insane, but he has three fans, so we can't really match him up with those top 15 fighters. And it was Carlos Diego Fajaya, he was a fighter, he's been around for a while, but he always needed that one big win. And I really thought they were feeding him to Taisumov. you got a guy who, his two previous losses was against Dariush and against Poirier, so he'd only lost to the top tier lightweights in the world. And and they were finally putting him up against Tysimov, who at the time was on a five-fight win streak, and I believe they were all by stoppage. That fight wasn't even competitive. He made Tysimov tired early, and that was that really weird event in Abu Dhabi, UC 242, where Poirier fought Khabib, where it was like 118 degrees inside the cage. So it was just a really weird fight. Both guys were extremely sweaty before it even began. Just a weird X factor. But... Carlos Diego Fajaya, you really assumed, okay, if he's going to have any level of success, he's going to have to try to work the takedown, really wear on Tai Sumov, get him to the mat, and maybe can really, you know, choke him out, work his jiu-jitsu. He struck him for all 15 minutes and actually showed a really diverse skill set. In that third round, I've never seen Maribek Tai Sumov look like that. Like, there were points where Fajaya had him hurt. I mean, Tai Sumov was starting to swell up. There was one strike, I remember it in particular. He lands, and Taisumov, like, wobbles up against the cage and then wobbles back even more. Like, we had never seen that. And for context, Maribek Taisumov is, like, you know, a lightweight Devin Clark in his legs. They're huge. They are. And Diego Fajaya was able to negate kicks. He was able to withstand any wrestling attempts. And again... The boxing really prevailed in that And he even threw his own kicks in that fight, too. That was sort of... We're starting to see... Uh, we'll call him the modern version of Carlos Diego Fajaya. He does throw kicks now. He threw a lot of head kicks against Tysimov, and it is interesting. I don't know if he only threw the head kicks because his head kick or his lead uh, back foot was Tysimov's power hand. So if he was just trying to keep the hand of Tysimov occupied, that might be the reason he was throwing so many high kicks. But that's still such a good win, especially at the time. Because when you remember Tysimov going into that fight and the amount of hype he had associated with him... Diga Fajaya made it look like he did not belong in there. And it's interesting because we do have two, I would argue, primary grapplers who have really shown an extreme evolution in their striking for Benil and for Carlos Diego Fajaya. So the last thing I want to say about Diego Fajaya, you go back and you look at the fight against Anthony Pettis. And Pettis was kind of in an odd spot because he was coming off the loss to Nate Diaz where he looked flat. Like he just didn't look great in that fight. Comes out against Diego Fajaya. Diego. Just going in there with his lunch pail. He's got a ham sandwich in there, and I'm just going to walk him down. He did and eat a trillion leg kicks, though. That's what I was going to okay. say. Pettis kind of starts out. Well, he backs up, and he gets behind the two black lines. That's where you normally lose a fight. But he just starts throwing side kicks, and he goes to the legs. He goes to the body. He kind of whips it up top a little bit. And Diego just walks into it, walks into it. And then again, second round, Diego takes over. He ends up submitting Anthony Pettis. And that is, to me... That's his biggest win on his career. I mean, I know, you know, he came in from Legacy. He beat Colton Smith. We're going to do a video on Colton Poor Smith. Colton Smith. And Tarion Ware. But you look at the fights that guy had. Woof. Beats Ramsey, Nijem. Both of these guys have fights against him as well. Poor but Ramsey. But you look at the win streak for Carlos Diego Fajaya. 
OAM, Jared Gordon, Kyle Nelson. That was a weird one because he got rocked at the start. Nelson was in on short notice back UFC 231 in Toronto. Ends up finishing him. But that's why I look at that three-fight sample for Diego Fajaya. This is the Diego that I've gotten in these three fights. It's been the same Diego. It's been an evolved version where his boxing's getting to the point where he's good with his hands, but he's great on the ground. So let's flip it over to Benil Dariush. We talked enough about Diego Fajaya. For Benil Dariush, he's fought a lot more since Diego has, since they fought. He beats Diego. He finishes Darren Crookshank, rising zone. He beats Jim Miller. He beats Michael Johnson. Gets submitted by Michael Chiesa. He finishes James Vick, ex-MMA zone. Yikes, it's Andre Fialo. Before. Way to go on the weekend. He beats Rashid Magomedov. Which, who's... again, I think that was a big win back at the time. Rashid Magomedov is one of those names that's kind of been forgotten six, tw- since 2016. But at the time, that was a super important win for Benil Dariush. That was a big one. Uh, Magomedov was 19-1 at the time. Then he uh, Dariush loses to Barboza. Flying knee knockout loss. It's on a highlight reel. Not Terry Adams style, but it's still there. It's nice. Has a draw against Evan Dunham. Strange. Loses to Alexander Hernandez by finish in a fight where he was supposed to take on Bobby Green. Green out. Hernandez in on short notice. It was odd. But since then, he beat Tiago Moises. He finishes Drew Dober. He finishes Frank Camacho. He finishes Dracar Close in one of the wildest finishes you're ever going to see. Unless you saw the fight against Scott Holtzman where, listen... Benny missed weight in that one. We're going to give him a pass. You hate to see it. He weighed 158. Diego missed weight his third to last fight against Rustam Kabalov at 157. But Dariush misses weight against Holtzman. He goes in there and lands this crazy combination, backs Holtzman up against the cage, lets Holtzman back out a little bit, and then spinning back fist. And listen, oh, sometimes God. when people land spin attacks, they're aiming for an elbow, they get a forearm. They're aiming for uh, a fist, they end up with, you know, a forearm. He got all fist, and he knocked Skull, Skull Holtzman, Scott Holtzman down. Hot sauce, we'll call him that. And the referee knew that it was over at that point. Well, yeah, because he just ate a full-blown spinning back fist from Benil Daryush after eating a 40-punch combo. Weird how <laughs> he went down. Okay, Benil Daryush is my big dark horse of this division. And I understand people are going to come at me with the issues that Benil Daryush has always had. How can a guy who suffered a knockout loss to Alexander Hernandez eventually become, and I'm not going to say he's going to become a UFC champ, but I do see Daryush as being maybe an Oliveira type character. He's like the next Jan Blachowicz at 155. I, I, well, he's not ever going to become champ, so let's slow that down. But I do think Daryush on his best day can give those top five fighters really hard fights. And there was a reason he was supposed to be matched up with Charles Oliveira. Uh, just later on last year. Now, of course, Oliveira went, goes on to fight Ferguson, and we all know and love Charles Oliveira for what he was able to do to Tony Ferguson. But Benil Daryush had a really good chance in that fight, especially of beating Oliveira. Like, Daryush just doesn't have the big win associated with his win streak. I think the Jakar Close win, again, that one's really important because you look at the crazy finish now. He gets stunned, and he comes back and knocks out Close. That's great. Look at the first round of that fight, though. He has Jakar's Close back the whole entire time. Like, I don't see Carlos Diego Fajaya out grappling Benil Dariush at all in this fight. Even if you go back and watch their first fight, Dariush is the one who has three takedowns to Diego Fajaya's zero. I think Dariush is the better wrestler out of these two. Now, I think Diego Fajaya uses his wrestling a lot more in MMA fights, but I don't think he can go out there and just out grapple Dariush. I understand Dariush gets submitted by Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa is as big of a lightweight as you can possibly be, and he's going to submit people. I understand they're both guys that have some submission losses, some submission wins, but I would definitely say Michael Chiesa and Benil Dariush are two of the better overall grapplers in the UFC. I don't think Carlos Diego Fajaya is going to go out there with the same game plan he did have against Pettis. With Pettis, listen, not that there's a game plan out there to beat him, but if you follow a certain path to victory, you can tend, to, you can end up beating him. If you take him down, get in full mail, just make him work on the ground, you can win by submission. Not that there's a game plan out there, but if but you if, follow if a you certain go, game plan. If you go to the back of a bookstore in the dusty corner, there's a Coles notes and you can figure it out. Exactly. So, Fajaya, I see much more of a Tysonov style from him in this fight. I do think he's going to go out there looking to strike more, which could be a really good game plan because we've seen Daryush get cracked in the past, but this version of Daryush on the feet, especially, he's really taken a dedication to his striking training, and you can really see the improvements, especially now. He does have a much more, 
I'll say a much better, just really toolbox of different techniques you can go to. We do see some spinning techniques from him, but just his fundamentals have improved so much. We've seen his boxing really get to a point where I, I don't want him to go there and start, you know, having a stand-up fight with Dustin Poirier anytime soon, but his striking is at least now enough of a threat where he can incorporate his wrestling in more because people are focused on his striking. I just really like the evolution that we've seen of Benil Daryush, and it does feel like every time he gets to the top and he gets knocked down, he's still willing to reinvent himself, even at 31 years old and the crazy thing too carlos diego fajeo while he hasn't been super active the two fights in what 2019 the one in 2020 you know kind of stalled out near the end of the year but now he gets an opportunity here dariush has been active the entire time it's weird with fajeo where you know you're 17 and 2 you're 36 years old you just turned 36 dariush to look at him and in my head i think man this guy's old he's got gray hair he's almost 32 like physical peak prime is benil dariush but if you put on a tweed jacket, I think he's a professor. I really would. That's what peak physical just performance looks like. How but does that feel? Benil Dariush, again, the win streak's amazing. All of the finishes. Diego Fajaya just, uh, you know, kind of same thing. Fortis MMA, he just gets better at boxing. Nice in tight with his range. He's great. You don't have to worry about takedowns if you're Diego Fajaya against most guys because your jiu-jitsu so good. Benil Dariush, very well-rounded. King's MMA, we talk about Rafael Cordero. Mike Tyson had a draw against Roy Jones Jr. Thanks to Rafael Cordero. But again, you want to talk somebody with really good boxing fundamentals, and it's it's not really the best example, but Calvin Gastelum. You look at a guy like Gastelum, really good with his range when he's on and when he really gets it. Benil Dariush, same thing. But we've seen a lot of great strikers from Kings. We talked about Jocelyn Edwards on this card. We've talked about Sabina Mazow on this card. We're skipping over the most obvious pick. We're talking about Mervyn Vittori from Giga Kings. Chikadze, the best Giga Chikadze as well, especially in the lower weight classes with Giga. So for Benil Dariush, the methods are there. For Diego Fajaya, the methods are there. So let's talk about the fan vote over on Topology. You get an idea what people are thinking. 1,252 total votes, 67% Dariush. 40% saying he's going to win by decision. 47% saying he's going to win by knockout. For the third of fans that thought Fajaya could win or that think Fajaya could win, 60% by decision. Bit of a surprise to me that if Fajaya is going to get the win, by decision. Now, we have seen him win by decision more so than we have seen Darius. It's the only way I see him winning. But I think if Fahe goes out there with a strike-heavy game plan to push a big pace, we've seen Darius get cracked. There's an opportunity for Fahe to get a finish in this one. So let's have a look at the odds while you blink. Hopefully you blink. Thank I, you. I, I disagree with that point, but that's fine. Fahe open a minus 125. He's now at a minus 126 on best fight odds when they average him out. For Darius, plus 105 to plus 102. So Darius, the underdog, Fahea the favorite. Man, I love this fight. This is a really tricky one here. So, I love this fight too. I, again, there is a path to victory for both guys. I don't agree with the fact that Fahea needs a stoppage in this. Because again, you have to understand the level of strikers that have knocked out Benil Dariush. And I always go back to what Luke Thomas said about the Edson Barbosa loss. Edson Barbosa is such a good striker that he was able to take all of this into consideration before he threw that flying knee against Benil Dariush. He had eaten enough jabs against Dariush and had such a good understanding of the distance between the two of them that Dariush was faking a takedown after some of his jabs and not faking a takedown after others. Edson Barbosa was able to judge which jabs were setting up the takedown attempts and which jabs were just jabs, and he was able to take all that into consideration and throw the perfect flying knee at the perfect time. I don't think CDF's going to be able to do that. And listen, Alexander Hernandez knocked out Dariush. He went out there caught him with a good shot early. That can happen to anybody. Jakar Close caught him. Jakar Close is a good striker, though, and he uses his striking at range, where Carlos Diego Fajaya, if he's going to land with power, he has to almost ramp himself into his shots, where the majority of the time we see Dariush get hit is on his counter shots where he's able to get countered i don't think fahaya has enough trunk movement or the head movement to really make daryush pay for some of those i think daryush outstrikes him on the feet though 10 days out of 10 i really do i think he's got the wrestling advantage so that on the defense he can make fahaya work enough so that fahaya's cardio won't really be that big of an asset especially as the fight goes on because this is interesting these are two guys who love to huff and puff after the first round both have great cardio though and costigo fahaya it was the bit of the story throughout his career where oh he gets tired not really like he can keep a really high pace throughout all 15 minutes it's not something i'm worried about in this fight at all i really doubt either guy has the game plan to really make the other one tired and be able to capitalize over that. I'm going to pick Dariush, though. I don't know if I'm that confident in his ability to TKO Carlos Diego Fajaya, but I do think on the feet, 
He's going to offer enough looks to CDF so that he won't just be able to go in there, go for takedowns. He's going to make him work, and I do think some big power shots will open up by the end of the fight. That's the thing. I mean, for Diego Fajaya, again, I would expect him, if he's going to get a win, I don't know, maybe by decision. He has decent volume. I think That's he needs to thing. wrestle, personally. I, I, yeah, I would think he would need to wrestle him from a position like that. Maybe you go for a submission. Benil Dariush is a good defensive grappler. That's the other thing. With Diego Fajay, and you, you touched on it a bit, when he goes forward, when I talked about it, he marches down his opponents. Kabilov, Taisumov, even Pettis, really, to get in close. He's kind of square when he does it, so you can hit him. But again, he does have good boxing. He does have good counters. So, listen, this is a rematch of two guys that have very high-level wins on great win streaks. So, again, if you close your eyes and you wake up the next morning and Benil Dariush wins, great. And if Diego Fajay wins... That could happen too. It is a tough one to try and figure out. I like Benil Dariush as well. I like the pop on the end of his shots. He's really good at using his range, like you said. I mean, Edson Barboza was able to figure him out, but, you know, Edson Barboza is one of the greatest uncrowned champs at 55. Like, just, it is wild to me, though. Like, that's the striking IQ of Edson Barboza. He's able to take all of that into consideration in a massive arena full of people cheering his name, and he's still able to get the knockout. I just don't think Carlos Diego Fajaya can make Dariush pay for those uh, problems. So, for me, I'm going with Dariush. I, I love the power. I love the defensive grappling. But this is just an awesome fight. It's a fight in the night contender on our card. We're going to sit back. We're going to watch this. And at the end of the night, maybe a light a cigar. You just enjoy it. It's going to be a, a great one. Neither one, one so of us smoke cigars. I'm but, going yeah. with Dariush. You're going with Dariush. When I got married, I did. And I'm looking forward to this one. we got a great card coming up. You have Sandhagen taking on Edgar in the co-main. You have Renault taking on Macy Chasson. That's a high level one at Bantamweight. And in our main event slot, you have the Demolition Man taking on Drago, Overeem, and Volkovs. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's, Let's get, get into it. it.